Hey everybody, my name is Victoria. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm doing a video that I have really been excited to make and that is my Anne of Green Gables series review slash ranking. I'm going to attempt to rank these books in order of my own personal enjoyment. I realize that not everybody would rank them exactly this way, but this is just my personal opinion of which book spoke to me the most, um, which books are all-time favorites, and which books in the series I thought were a little weaker. I first want to say a big thank you to Tia from Tia and All the Books and Amanda from The Curly Reader, because last year they hosted an Anne of Green Gables series read-along, and that's probably the only reason that I got through all eight of the books in the timely manner that I did. Usually I have a tendency to drag out series forever and ever and I never finish them. <laughs> so I was really glad that this read along was happening and it pushed me to finish the entire series. And I'm so glad that I did because it is truly one of my favorite series of all time now. And just so you know, there might be mild spoilers in this video. I'm going to be as spoiler free as I possibly can. However, it depends on what you consider a spoiler is. For example, if I hold up a book and say at what point this book takes place in Anne's life and kind of the events that are surrounding her life at that time, um, you might consider it a spoiler. So if you don't want to know anything about the series, I would say don't watch this video yet or maybe um, just skip ahead if I'm talking about a book in the series you haven't read yet. I will put timestamps down below just in case I talk about a book and you want to skip it because you haven't read it yet. I will definitely put that down in the description box. So please know that I'm going to be as spoiler free as I possibly can. But just because of the nature of the series, um, I have to give away some little things here and there. All right, let's go ahead and get into the ranking. My least favorite book in the series is Anne of Ingleside, which is book number six in the series. There are eight books. I don't think I mentioned that. So by the time we get to book six, Anne is a mother. She has five children. And this book is full of the children's antics, mostly. There's some plot lines that have to do with um, a family that the children meet and that they want to associate with. We're also dealing with Anne getting older and becoming in her more middle-aged stage and she has some insecurities with just entering into that new stage of life. This one is my least favorite book because I felt like there were some things in Anne's character that were a little bit surprising and didn't seem fitting to her and what we knew about her before. Um, specifically some prejudices that she expresses and some overall fears that she has just didn't feel like Anne to me. It didn't feel like Anne would have those things. And I understand making her flawed. Um, I think it's totally okay for Anne to be a flawed character because flawed characters are more realistic. But I think it was these specific flaws in this book that just seemed wrong. They just seemed a little bit off-putting and out of place. So that's what makes me put this book um, at the bottom of the list for me personally. There are still beautiful themes in this book that I enjoyed very much. One of them being the inevitability of change, children growing up, women growing older. Also, there's the theme of appreciating what you have and being thankful for what you have. So there's still just wonderful, typical L.M. Montgomery themes that you know and love. And so this is a four star book for me. It's still not a bad book. It's just my least favorite out of the series. Appropriately, in seventh place is the seventh book in the series. That is Rainbow Valley. Um, the seventh book is in seventh place. Didn't mean to do that, but it just happened. Um, this book is more about Anne's children. Anne doesn't make such a big appearance in this book. She kind of flutters in here and there, but she's really out of the picture mostly. And that makes it a little bit less enjoyable for me. I do wish the later books had a little bit more Anne focus, but it is what it is. And the children are still really fun to follow. And there's lots of humor, lots of fun antics. 
Um, children learning how to interact with the world, children learning empathy for others, great themes again. And uh, Rainbow Valley is the place where they play. And it's just such a picturesque, beautiful idea of these kids growing up outdoors <laughs> before there were cell phones and things like iPads and, you know, all those electronic things that kids do indoors now. <laughs> the kids find their imagination in the Rainbow Valley and that's where they play, that's where they are creative, and that is just such a picturesque scene and I loved it. it. It made my heart warm and I wanted to go to Rainbow Valley. I just felt like nothing truly significant happens in this book. Um, there's just a little of adventures here and there, but I didn't feel like it was a super necessary book in the series. It's just kind of a bridge book, I think, into the last book. So that's what makes it a little bit lower on my list. In spot number six, I'm going to put Anne of Windy Poplars, which is the fourth book in the series. This one is very enjoyable to read. Um, it's just another one of those more anecdotal books. It's more about the drama surrounding Anne than it is about Anne's actual life. In this book, Anne is a teacher on assignment. She's also not around Gilbert in this book, so that's kind of a sad thing for me. <laughs> Gilbert kind of disappears, so it's okay. It was still fun. Um, the characters that Anne interacts with are a handful, and you almost feel bad for Anne because she has so much drama that follows her and people want her to solve their drama in this book. And I, I was just thinking when I was reading it, like, why is it up to Anne to solve everyone's problems? <laughs> and Anne is just so sweet and kind and is such a good friend to everyone. And I think that's what makes this book really endearing is Anne is just a really good example of what a good friend should be and can be. Again, nothing super significant happens in this book, in my opinion. It's more about the day-to-day -day and the mundane life and the little dramas that people have with each other. In spot number five, I'm putting the last book in the series, which is Rilla of Ingleside. This book is truly beautiful. I adore this book. It's still five stars for me. This is where the five stars start for me in the series. Um, the other books that I just talked about were definitely more four star books. This one though made me cry actual tears. It is really heartbreaking because we follow World War One and the characters are experiencing World War One as it starts and the men in their lives go off to war. There's some just sad things that happen. I'm not going to say anything else, but there are sad things that happen in this book. It is brutal. It is about loss and grief and also about rebirth. And that's, of course, what Montgomery really strives at is showing how happiness can come out of pain. And it's something that I just love this author for is that theme throughout her series. Rilla is Anne's youngest daughter. So Anne is a much older lady in this book. Um, Rilla is about 16 years old. So it does have those themes of youth and um, first loves and just firsts, first experiences. And that was nice to see again. After maybe the fifth book, you don't get those firsts anymore from Anne. So this was just fun to revisit those ideas. This book has a much gloomier tone because it's set during World War One. It has some heavier themes, some heavier moments, some sad times. Have a tissue box ready because it definitely got me right in the feels. And that's what makes this book a little bit higher up on my list in spot number five. In spot number four, I have the second book in the series, which is Anne of Avonlea. In this book, Anne is more of a teenager. And what I love about this book is that Montgomery really maintains Anne's character. She's still this sweet, innocent girl who has wide eyes for the world and is very curious about the world. She has her whole life ahead of her and she really maintains that even while experiencing some more serious things in her life. In this book I really got a sense of how far Anne has come as an orphan having such negative experiences from a young child and her ability to just become a beautiful adult and also just a giving member of society. In this book, she's very much about her community and helping to make it a better place. And Anne is just such a great role model in this book. 
and she also starts to become a teacher. She falls in love with teaching in this book, and that's just really close to my own heart because I'm a teacher too, and the experiences she has where she's um, dealing with kids, difficult kids, or um, kind of like A plus pupils, and um, families that maybe try to make her life a little difficult in this book as well, and who judge her as a teacher. It was kind of funny to see that those things happen back then, and they happen now too, where parents get mad at teachers for giving their kid a bad grade or something. So it was amusing to me that those kinds of things happened, even in the early 1900s. <laughs> it's just really sweet. It's sweet to see also Gilbert and Anne's relationship start to bloom, and I just really enjoyed the second book. In spot number three, I'm putting the third book in the series, that is Anne of the Island. I love this book because this is the romance book in the series. This is the one we get the most Gilbert, and that makes me love it. Also, Anne goes to college in this book, and I just found even her experience to be very nostalgic of when I was in college, you start just comparing your stories with hers and it made me reminiscent for college friendships and um, there's just a nice little camaraderie here with her roommates. This book is so fun and I just love seeing Anne really just start to become an adult and have big milestone kind of things happen for her. And the ending of this book is one of my favorite endings out of any of the books in the series. So Anne of the Island is definitely a favorite. Spot number three. We're getting up to the top two. In spot number two is a big surprise to me because when I first read this book, I didn't like it as much. And I actually thought it was going to be one of my least favorite books in the series. But upon further reflection, I actually think it's one of the best ones. And that is the fifth book, Anne's House of Dreams. This one is another sad one. And I didn't initially like it because of the dark, sad, disappointing things that happen in this book. There's also a lot of beauty in this book, so don't get me wrong. The sadness is not for the whole book, but there's a lot of change again that happens. Um, it's Anne kind of settling in and settling into what it means to be a married woman. It's very much about the domestic life. It's a lot quieter than some of the other books. It's more introspective, I would say. And at first that introspection really threw me off because this is really the first book that is more introverted, I would say, in the series is when you get to the fifth book. But upon thinking about it and just having some time to reflect on the series as a whole. I think this book is pivotal and the things that happen in it are pivotal to shaping Anne and also just very relatable. This is one of the more relatable books. I think there's a lot that you can relate to with Anne and just those early growing pains of establishing yourself in the world, establishing your identity and figuring out, is this what my life is now? what is my life? What is my place in the world in my new status? And I found that just to be so incredibly relatable. And I rated it four stars at first when I read it, but I think it's five stars. It just is one of those books. I don't know. It just creeped up on me. So in spot number two, surprising both me and you, Anne's House of Dreams. So you probably know by now what the favorite book is. How could you honestly... How could you put any other book in spot number one other than the first book? This is where it all starts. This is where the magic happens. <laughs> um, this is where you fall in love with Anne. And I think I have to credit Montgomery with just masterful character work and also the plot. The plot is fantastic too. Um, also hits you right in the feels. I did read Anne of Green Gables as a child as well. So I think this story just being familiar to me, um, feeling like coming home reading this book, I can't put it in any other spot other than number one. I think this first book really does grab you. I think it's a great picture of what this series offers and what it's capable of. Anne is an inspiring person as a child. She inspires adults. So you got to give this book credit for that. She inspires me personally, spiritually. She's inspirational. 
Anne of Green Gables is a book I will reread forever and ever, and I hope to reread this series over and over, but definitely will reread the first book probably the most in the series. There's nothing more classic than Anne of Green Gables. I just adore this book with my whole heart, and it is number one, clearly. I would love to know if you've read the Anne of Green Gables series, what would your ranking be? Do you disagree with any of my rankings? If you do, that's okay. But I would love to know why or why you would put maybe certain books higher than others than I did. It would be fascinating to compare lists. Go ahead and drop your list in the comments if you have a list. I would love to know. And if you haven't read the series, I highly recommend it. Please go read it. And if you are planning on read it, definitely let me know because I would love to revisit the series with you and live vicariously through you. Um, please talk to me about the series if you decide to read it. I have some other social media links down in the description box. I have a bookstagram account and a Goodreads where you can follow me and connect with me more about bookish things. And don't forget to subscribe if you wanna see more bookish content from me. I post weekly videos. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. Thank you so much for watching and for going on this Anne of Green Gables journey with me. Keep reading great books. And until next time, bye bye